So, I mean, this is going to be, uh, you know, a fairly big undertaking. There's a lot of work to be involved in that. That's not just a yes or no answer to that one, that's for sure. Uh, I got to be fixed on my And knowing that Alberta, Alberta tourism has had a trend in the open plan, so it's clean and tourism. And that's what I plan on doing with the Canadian Action Plan. So, we're going to be 10 to 20 percent cashing. I'm going to get up to a quarter million dollars to extend our bank account and make this place awesome. That's totally awesome. Right. Oh, that, if you did that, the lines would have to work out with some trails then as well? Well, we don't own the trails. I don't know. Yeah, right. But then would they have to build an agreement with them? There would be, yeah, I, I, I would assume there would be an agreement for that too. And, and right now, we don't own the trails. But I mean, that's, uh, we're, we're working on that. We own both of them. Yeah. Trails on the Refland, we're discussing that with them. Correct. And uh, I'm not sure how much of the trail could be put on to each of them. I probably didn't come prepared with that information. Uh, we own the center part of the trails where the uh, land. Um, yeah, and, and where the uh, land transaction took place. Mm -hmm. um, Year, so, what you want is the campground to run fully by yourself, but not us paying the bills. Absolutely, it would be interesting. Financial assistance, uh, uh, obviously. Right? Um, if I could 
to say I spoke to the one of the fellows that runs the Lahoop Live campground. A lot of their money came from a lot of wealthy people in town and a lot of donations. But um, because they don't have fire pits and stuff like that, they do have some money hired. But if the lions here were doing it, we could still function the way we are. Yeah. Uh, and you said they own the land? Lions own that land? No, I don't know. So, you can tell you'll see you when you're going to. I think, but yeah, it's a lion campground and lions look out there. I don't know how they do it. There's a lot of, like, if you, even if you just Google it, like, Google a lot of lions who own their properties, like, yeah. they're building. So. Well, and even, even the Devon project, like, when we were down at Devon, okay, so I don't know if anybody's aware, but there's a big bronze lion. The Devon Campground said the Thorsby Bishop Lions donated. It was like a $10,000 prize line. Years and years and years, and years and years ago. But like talking to the Devon Lions, they have like this pretty awesome relationship. It's like the Lions give back to the town of Devon. The, Devon actually, the city of Devon, the town of Devon actually paid for the boardwalk. And it was like a joint, it was a joint venture because the bank was growing and they had to do something with the boardwalk. So it was a joint venture and they worked together. So, like, the Lions put up, the, went for the grant, but the town gave them the initial money to match the grant. So, that's kind of like the relationship that we like to have with the town of Gordon. It's like most Lions can't go down You go down to Rimby, it's the same thing. Because it is a multi use park. Um, even though, like, the town of Rimby, they have, like, these trails and they have these workout machines and stuff that the town pays for, but it's in the Lions campground, but it's on their property. So it has to be like a joint venture of some sort. And it's it's definitely something that we can do. Nope. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah, because you're helping me flip all the grants. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> So uh, I guess I'd like to see maybe a, a motion to accept uh, that for information and to direct the administration to draft an MAO with the lines, I guess is what we'd be looking for. Uh, I would like to make that motion. I can make that motion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. My knees hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, next item, 3.1, policies to be rescinded, uh, policy 2010-02, code of ethics, and 2010-03, council administration and relationships, uh, for discussion, so. Mr. Mayor, can policies um, actually meld into the, uh, the uh, bylaw that, uh, whatever it bylaw? So there's no point in having the policies when they're sitting inside the bylaw. The bylaw has more strength and, and the bylaw has more accountability. So these policies that we're rescinding were built in 210, one was built in 210 and the wolf in 210. And if you look at um, policy 210, 275 on page 6 of 71, it basically talks about council role, administrative role, and legislative role. That's all in the municipal. And you take that in your, your orientation training and so forth. Uh, we don't believe that there needs to be a policy on that. And then 210-275 is all about uh, code of ethics. And basically, uh, the code of ethics is in your code of conduct bylaw. Uh, so there's no need for us to have a policy on that. So we're just um, uh, asking for uh, council's uh, recommendation to move to uh, regular or if you have uh, concerns before regular at the end of the month, please uh, email me and let me know what you're concerned about and what happens at regular is I attach all your emails and so forth so that everyone knows what everybody's saying and some of them will answer in, in between and uh, then it can be a more robust discussion uh, at regular. But we, um, we quite frankly don't see that the need for these policies are really All right, thank you. 
Anybody have any discussion right now on this? Anything you might bring up there or talk about? No, I've been, I'll, uh, we'll go through all of these here and then I'll just get a question to depth and for information. But uh, so we'll move on to 3.2, the meeting procedures bylaw. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, we've uh, proposed a new meeting procedures bylaw 2213 for council consideration. Uh, basically, what is attached is the 2008 bylaw for repeal, uh, the 2215. Uh, bylaw to repeal 2008 and the 2213 meeting procedures. So what we what we suggested in this one is um, the new bylaw. Draw your attention to some new things about it. Uh, basically, it's a lot of the same. You can notice that, that you're reformatting everything. So it looks better. If I can draw your attention to 26 out of 71, we got an inaugural meeting. Uh, basically, that is. Your meeting right after you're elected. And, and your old bylaw didn't have an inaugural meeting, it had an organizational meeting, but it didn't have your inaugural meeting. And basically, your inaugural meeting is, is to take your oath of office and set your deputy mayor schedule for the term of office, your council meeting, your code of conduct for elected officials, your meeting procedures bylaw. That's when you typically review it at your inaugural, and every year we're going to look at it at your, or at your organizational and appoint your signing authority. So, that's new. And then if I can draw your attention to page 27 of 71, uh, your organizational meeting is new. It wasn't in the old bylaw. And it talks about what we do yearly at an organizational meeting. So uh, we say that it's uh, the last month of October. And we must review the deputy mayor's schedule and appoint for the upcoming year. Appoint any members of council to meet and make an appointment for the meeting after the organizational meeting will be referred to a subsequent or special. And appointment should be for one year. Uh, appoint all legal solicitors if required. If we've appointed them last year for two years, then we don't have to worry. And we'll make sure that we know for your organization we you know, must appoint the auditors if required. And we don't have to. We should be for two years. Review all signing authority. Appoint the community members to committee of council. And FCSS will be coming to you and you're going to be uh, And uh, you'll Based those uh, applications each effort and come up with a motion uh, to approve the uh, CSS advisory board and any other committees that, that come up. Uh, and sign affidavits declaring confidentially during attendance uh, at a uh, closed remote electronic meeting. That's new. Uh, we check with legal, and legal said absolutely put in your bylaw. You can be absent for a meeting. And uh, um, as long as you sign an affidavit declaring that you're alone. Nobody else is listening, you don't tell anybody. And they also suggest that we sign into the organizational meeting, everybody all together, each an affidavit, it's good for the year. And uh, you're all adults, so we're all adults here. So uh, they said a lot of uh, councils are doing that, and they said with, with the onset of electronic meetings and people's schedules, uh, it just makes it easier. So, and you can also vote. So um, just have to make sure that you're on it. So that's regarding in in camera, we can now attend and we can now vote. Yes. And we'll make sure that A, you'll either sign your affidavit to the organizational meeting or we'll ask you ahead of time to get them signed for the commissioner vote and bring them in and we'll, we'll uh, mark them on the, um, the uh, meeting uh, The next one, uh, let's see. Um, and so that's more detailed in part 13, page 2871, your in camera item. And it's just basically giving that permission in writing as well. Are we discussing part 13 in camera or are we discussing? Because I just had a question about something in part 13. Sure. Because um, I don't think we had this before, so I don't know how it works. Because um, in the past, we, um, if we chose not to have the CAO or the CFO in the meeting, we just asked them to leave, but now we have to do a special resolution for that. What you do, uh, Councilor Shelley, as you went through Councilor Shelley, is you would come into the meeting, then you would have a motion asking us that we're no longer, we don't, we're not required for the meeting, and we leave. But we, we've, as authorized um, delegated authority officers, you need to come into the camera, but it is your right if you don't want to be there, but you have to come out. That's what they need to do. So you have to do that outside of camera, though? Yeah, 
that's kind of a weird in and out thing. Uh, right, and then uh, let's see if I got better. Oh, yes, uh, the um, electronic meeting. So that's on uh, page 371, part 17. Um, that's your affidavit. It talks about your electronic meeting. In section seven, we are going to make a change. Um, it, it, it reads when a council member attends a closed session, or it's not just the same thing, uh, realize that they'll be required to confirm that they have attended the closed session alone. Final closed session by providing a statutory declaration or affidavit sworn or declared before Commissioner Burrow, and then I've added at the organizational meeting in October of each year. That is very clear. That's the only kind of change that we saw, and uh, that is that is it for our new changes in Highland. Um, question. So, in regard to that affidavit, are you going to? If they'll be provided to us to sign and well we're trying to think of the easiest way to do we have to commission a vote here that night <clears throat> but if you give it to us ahead of time we just give it to you ahead of time and okay but you'll time. provide us with the document it'll be like a set form for all of us Same okay form will be for all of you. we'll have the commissioner votes already set up and you can do it at your leisure to get it up they have their own form a matter of practicality and based on the wording of this you can't really do it at the organizational meeting because it's stating that after the fact, you're attesting that you did not have anyone else in the room, or like the way through is you're after the fact. You mean to bring it to the next meeting? Yeah, that's why we're doing it. Stating that you, in fact, didn't have anyone else in the room or anything else. Right? So you have to fundamentally change the wording if you're going to do it once a year at the organizational meeting. Thank you. Yeah, like, like, the, like the wording is very clearly a after the fact, but you're yeah, saying yeah. to do it before the fact. So yeah. just so we're all. For the year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, because the, yeah, the original after every meeting and then we decided to do it. Well, there's the lawyer suggested we do it at yeah. the organizational meeting. Which is fine, but then yeah, you yeah. Yeah. fundamentally rewrite this sentence. So to speak. Yeah, because it said before the next regular meeting, I think it does. And, yeah. and the wording is all as a post, as a post you know, yeah. so facto as a, you know. And then also it does state that um, we we have a maximum of three times per calendar year to attend by us. So we could attend, but we just wouldn't have the option to vote, or? Well, you can, you can, uh, uh, right through to Councilor Shelley, we put that into this from your last bylaw, but you can change it. This is your bylaw. If you want to be able to attend electronically at every meeting, that's up to you as a council, um, for sure. Um, your bylaw says free, but it, it is entirely up to you. So you may want to take until it's regular to think about it. Uh, so every bylaw is different with a, with a uh, meeting procedures bylaw. Like I get I get why we want to keep it low, but I'm just thinking like if we haven't yeah, sick stuff, we don't want you coming to the meetings if you're sick is all right. And yep. then if people are on vacation two or three times a year, they have that option also to attend, right? So I, we might want to increase it. Well if I if I could though, right? That's also uh unless otherwise approved by council. If you're saying I go on vacation three weeks a month, I don't think the rest of council is going to get on board with that. I thought you it was say, three I times a year, Corey. Yes, but my point is if you're saying, well, no, I legitimately was sick and couldn't attend in person for three months because I wanted to ensure I didn't pass a contagion on, I think the rest of council would approve the extension of and, and allow for more than three. Yeah, three is the sense. baseline, but it can be extended if there's legitimate reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Corey just created his own scenario. You had to <laughs> 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 <laughs>
3.3. And so we'll go to contact by law. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is we present 2202-14, Council Code of Conduct for Council Deliberation. Um, again, this is another one every annual organizational meeting. A review and determine any changes of the tournament ahead of time so that the house members can see it, which you do not do. Um, and so we have the old bylaw there. I don't think we made very many changes. Um, probably the, the newest one is part 10 on page 57 to 71, the properties of influence. Um, and, th and this is just in there for your protection. It's like when we put these things in, it just, it's protection for, for your council. Uh, uh, can't seek the influence decision for personal reasons or making a position as a counselor. Again, you're attempting to gain or advance with or indirectly a personal or private interest. Probably you're attempting to cause detriment to counsel, any counsel or any member of the administration or other third party, and seeking personal benefit or gain from the information. And we talked to legal about this one because it, it can be misconstrued by counsel as who's doing anything wrong, and that's not the purpose of it. It, it just protects you in case, uh, let's say we have a big, huge Company coming into town, and you know the president. The president says, "Well, if you do this for me, we're moving into town." And and, uh, and um, somebody and, and and there's some sort of kickback or some sort of something about it. This this protects you and helps you say no. So that's basically about the only big change, I believe. Is there another one? Yes. We changed the whole the whole flavor of it. Um, but take a look and compare it to the old one. And um, Please add your changes in your comments. And again, my phone is always on. And my texting is always on. So if I don't answer the phone, text me and I'll get back to you. If you want to discuss it and want me to make notes on it for, for introduction for the next week, it's totally, I welcome that. We welcome that administration. And if you can't get me and need to give notes, please, by all means, contact our ledge clerk, Jesse, as well. And she will take those notes and those things from you. And next year, I will incorporate them. Thank you for that. Any other comments or questions from there? Uh, can I get a motion to accept 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3 .3 for information? I'll make a motion to accept 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3 as information. In favor? That is carried. So we will move on to the council reports. I guess uh, 3.4, the first one up. Uh, so the month of September, the following activities, uh, September the 13th, Council of the Whole, September 14th, um, I attended a meeting with the City of Donna to discuss Alberta placing with uh, <coughs> Justice Minister Shandu. I'm sure everybody saw those kind of, uh, that invitation there. So they had uh, one hour sessions with, with 20 people in attendance there. So uh, we decided uh, to go to the, the very last one in Edmonton. And uh, when we showed up, there was, uh, of the 20 people, there were six people in attendance. Uh, it's kind of good in one way that we got to uh, point blank to ask some questions. And just a couple of the questions that I asked them, the first one that I asked them is that why wouldn't there be a referendum as far as the uh, changing from the RCMP to the to a number of police, you know, if that's what they're going to do. And the answer I got was that uh, Premier Kenny had promised a referendum, but due to him living his post, that promise is off the table. <laughs> so uh, no decision. He also said that no decision would be made by the current, uh, current legislation there to, in, during their term. It would carry over to the next term, and obviously now that uh, Kenny is gone and uh, Daniel Smith, then it will be, be with her to make that decision, but there still will not be a referendum on it. Uh, they also stated that what they're doing is, and we all have been told this before, is that uh, they're still doing a fact-bonding uh, situation where they're relying on feedback from, from, uh, from these type of meetings and conversations with municipalities and, and uh, residents. So I, I thought it was a, an awful answer myself. I also asked them, you know, they had a proposal there where they were going to put 10 RCMP in every rural detachment. And I asked them, uh, you know, if they were really going to do it to combat uh, rural crime. And I said, if that's the case, why are you waiting? Why, why wouldn't you do it right now? And the, re 
why I had that was that they didn't have the authority to do so. So that was one question, and then uh, uh, kind of there was a bunch of other ones, but like I say, there's only six of us. Uh, Donna had some few, a few there. I asked them also about the training. I I I, uh, I didn't see how they were going to be training if they went to the Alberta Police because uh, they'd have to take them to Alberta and or to in Calgary and Edmonton because uh, obviously they wouldn't go to Regina anymore. And uh, I was told that uh, Edmonton is 26 weeks and. China is 24 and Calgary is 27, and their training is top notch. Uh, one of the other attendees said, "Okay, that's that's great. You're training people for city police, but now you've got guys going out to rural posting, and it's way different training." And once again, I was not given a real good answer on that. So, uh, did you want to make any comments on that, Donna? I'm smiling. Uh, Mr. Quickly <coughs> said that uh, rural policing. Uh, that uh, they would have in the training someone to provide lectures on rural police. <laughs> so I kind of looked at Mr. Mayor and he said, well, you know, and, and I said, well, I'm from a farm, I'm rural. I said, we had a lot of deaths on the farm in the 70s and 80s when I was growing up. And uh, rural people tend to take it in your own hands. You can't tell everybody to put power in your bedroom when their dogs being murdered in the front yard and well. The grain truck being stolen it may not be much to insurance, but to replace it at eighty thousand dollars is well spent grain truck. Interesting, the EPS member they had no rural. Uh, Mr. Shander had no rural uh, committee policing around it. It was all EPS and RCMP. An EPS member said, "Oh, I, I think it sounds like you will know what you're talking about," and we kind of went, "Yeah," because I said, yeah, "In any snap of the fingers, sir, in Edmonton." Unit, you have a, a helo unit, you have a SWAT team, and you have 15 police cars show up. And I said, what you're proposing here is you're going to have two centers of excellence, one in Edmonton and one in Calgary. So I said, high level needs a K9, and you can't get them there for an hour and a half. Because I said, I know how long it takes to fly to High River, get them for four years, or high level. So I, I said, there's some issues. And then we also talked about their timeline, how they're going to be fully operational in two years. It's, it's to negotiate themselves out of the RCMP contract. It's never going to happen by the time they uh, uniform uh, vehicles. Uh. Then we talked about detachments, and uh, they're going to put the new uh, provincial police service on the RCMP detachments, and, and I indicated your permission from the mayor's office. Uh, that's not where the crime is. Uh, when, when, our, when our local RCMP here, when we needed them about three weeks ago for a situation here in the office, uh, fortunately, the staff sergeant wins in, but the rest of the RCMP were an hour and a half out in the county. <coughs> and the, the one other uh, member of the uh, previous staff, or the Minister Task Force was military, and, and God bless his service, but he doesn't understand rural policing either. And so it was an interesting back and forth. I think Redwater then chimed in, and then uh, a, a village of Chipman then chimed in, and then we just step back and it, it was a, just exactly what we figured it was you know we, we didn't learn anything new other than that we point blank asked him some questions and he, he had to because we were right in the face yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just what we figured yeah go ahead Andrew uh Karen Austin did they happen to mention where they're getting this staff from did they did they say anything about that because I know like Edmonton State Police is about 19% under capacity. Yeah. Uh, RCMP are well over 45% under capacity. Yeah. So. No, they, they were gonna, they were just gonna do a do a, a branding thing and and, and try to get anybody they could in there, but they didn't have a brand yet or anything. There's no brand for them. Uh, they're relying a lot on professors, and uh, they're having. Seminars with professors giving their two bits words and, and so it looks good on paper. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't even look that good. Yeah, no, yeah. there's thousands of little bits and bits and bits and Yeah, it, it's a pretty sad state of affairs. This whole thing, and, and it's just you know they're there's going through the motion, and then they're going to turn it over to the to the new uh, whoever's in power there. And, and go from there. Yeah, just interesting last week. Uh, 
and efforts in vain. Help us break the grasp of this state because we want to be in our hands. And the grasp will cover this state with closely pricked in their hands. Did you get your uh, First Nations are all failing their thing over ourselves. Well, I'm sure for ourselves, they certainly can. Uh, they're sure they're eating the wings, it's ridiculous. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. They'd be better off just staying the way they are, in all honesty. Well, I understand all you're saying. I thought we'd do a due diligence here and uh, we just got more of the same. Yeah. And, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for uh, for yeah. supporting the opportunity to go with you and to comment with you, Candace. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, September 17th, I attended a 3920 workshop in Morwick. Uh, we did a squad of rhinos, mission statement, five-year statement, goals, marketing strategy, and colony. Biggest drawback that I found and I, I brought up is just like um, it was reported before is that, you know, 3920 has not accomplished anything in the past couple of years. And, and in my opinion, that should be their priority. And uh, I made my comment to that. and. Uh, it's known, but you know, hopefully we're going to get something new. Um, they are having a um, uh, annual general meeting on September the 25th in Breton. September? Yep. Uh, uh, it's January 25th, sorry, 23. <laughs> in what? 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 Oh, right, right. It's going to be a supper meeting, so it'll start at 6 o'clock, and all councils from Orbert, Calmer, Breton, and of course we are all uh, invited. And uh, at that time, they hope to uh, unveil their video that they did of uh, uh, all four communities and uh, take it back and do whatever we want with it. And then come 27th, uh, regular council meeting. Uh, and then right away, 728, we had another 3920, a very short one, and uh, talked more about what was going to happen at the AGM. And then they talked a lot about business licenses. I don't know how many, how many 3920 business lines uh, storage we've done. Uh, yeah, they, they kind of looked at me after I'll talk to you about that. But, but, but yeah, for those people who don't know what it is, if, if you're uh, if you're a business person, or you probably explained that you're, you've got a license here. Yeah, right? rather than needing a license in the different municipalities, you yeah. just can pay the extra little bit here and have a license everywhere. Everywhere. The yeah. biggest issue, though, is there's such a wide discrepancy in pricing of business licenses. Correct. It kind of seems like it's, it's cheaper to just go buy a license in Warbury if you wanted to do, but if you want to do business in Calmar, well, then you're an idiot to not just get the 3920. So, there needs to be more harmonization of what the license fees are for it to make sense. Mm -hmm. So it happens that yeah. means, uh, there doesn't seem to be communication on who has got the 3920 designation or whatever on their local license. So then when you actually apply for a permit or anything, they say, well, you don't have a license, we can't give you a permit. You know, like, yes, I do, but it's this whole rigmarole every time. So, so, so that was brought up. Work yeah. done. I think there's no direction. No, there's there's no. A, there, on our business license and, thing, there's and, the box, yeah. charge them an extra. Then yeah, there's no, there's no actual no coordination to go further them. than that. Yes. Right? So yeah, so it's, it was a good idea that I thought was great when they started doing it. Like, it it might be quite a while ago. But yeah, there's very much room for improvement there. Yeah. Because the other thing, the other problem is that if you live in the county outside of Doors, you're a calmer. Say, for example, like a trucking company like the you know, roof on the town here, you can't get it. Why is that? They need, they need to find you with it. But, uh, anyhow, um, that concludes my report. Any questions, comments for anybody? All right, thank you. Um, I'll take uh, Other than the, the you know, regular council meetings, uh, there was just a couple of new foundation meetings, a governance committee meeting on the 8th and a board meeting on the 15th. <laughs> Uh, mostly just very, you know, kind of administrative, nothing overly important to report to me those other than subsequent to that 15th meeting, uh, they've, I, I think, finalized and got it nailed down to consult and do a regional needs assessment, which I think they're going to be talking to you about, and it is kind of a, a rushed 
they want to have it done for year end for grant application purposes. So figured I better give you the heads up on that. But otherwise, I'll just kind of run up the mill. Thank you. Questions, anybody? No questions. You good? Okay, uh, Councilor Munson. Uh, for the month of September, I attended all regularly scheduled council meetings. September 14th, I attended a wine and cheese function that was put on by Leduc Foundation, and it was in Leduc at Plainview Place. And I did not go out for this event. I traveled with Councilor Shelley Rush, and it was a very posh evening with Leduc Foundation and other dignitaries, as well as residents of Plainview Place and their families. September 15th, I had the Chamber of Commerce meeting. And there are up to 44 members now. There are many rewards to be becoming a member. The bylaws have been updated and they are registering as a society. They will pursue being a board of trade. The Chamber Gala event will be November 26th. Christmas in the Village will return on December 2nd. And September 21st was Community Awareness Night. I represented uh, Communities in Bloom there. And that evening, I also had library meetings. September 22nd, I volunteered for Senior Bingo. And September 26th, I pulled plants from the town planters. That's my report. Thank you. Any other questions? Sorry, I have to do this on my phone, which isn't going um, <laughs> so, month of September, um, I attended the regular cow and council meeting. Um, oh, and then, oh, it feels like I've discussed this before. So, on September 12th, um, I took our FCSS coordinator, Michaela, to the PTA meeting at the Thorsby Junior High and High School. Um, because I wanted to introduce her to the PTA and to the school um, because I feel it's important that there's a strong relationship with the council, the town, the school, and our FCSS to let them know what we offer and how that can help parents and the counselors at the school and such. Um, so there was that. And then on September 21st, I attended the library meeting which um, I don't have my notes in this book, but I just off the top of my head, a few things that were discussed, um, of course, was the budget. We discussed, did you have that? Did you skip over it? I can't, I did skip over it because I can't get my page to stop at the right spot. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> um, well, Tracy and I attended the library board meeting on September. I was working on it. First. And um, in that, it was quite a long meeting um, because we were discussing the budget. We were discussing the plan of service, um, which is coming along great. Um, doing an excellent job on that front. Um, they have a fantastic um, individual that's a volunteer that's helping them with that plan of service. Um, they were sharing upcoming events, of course, which I believe the next one is on the 26th in the evening from 6.30 to 8.30 at the library. I can't remember. It's a fella, but I don't remember what the actual event is off the top of my head. Um, and then also um, a big point of discussion was everyone that, I don't know what the word is, finishing their term on their board. So it looks like there's going to be at least three positions opening up on the library board. So they're looking for volunteers. Um, our chairperson is stepping down, which is a huge deal. Um, our secretary, I believe, our treasurer, oh, she, our treasurers, but we have someone training. Those were the main. Was there any open board? Yeah, and then open board positions. Oh, I attended. That's on my um, public relations yeah. stuff. Okay. Are you done with that? I'll move on then. Public relations stuff in September. Um, I did volunteer for the seniors bingo on September 8th as well. Um, I, of course, went to the PTA meeting. Um, I attended the Leduc Foundation um, Wine and Cheese on September 14th. Um, got to meet the board and some local politicians. Um, 
We got to meet um, the fella that actually represents um, the Leduc area, the MLA, the MLA, right? Gerald Taroka's counterpart. Oh, Mike yeah, so we were, um, we got to meet Mike Lake and he was telling us about just how they're trying to redivide and get us included in with them and such. So, I mean, it was great learning. We learned a lot. We got to meet some people that we normally wouldn't get to meet and stuff, so it was awesome. Um, September 21st, I attended the community awareness as well, um, just to check out the different booths and what was being offered and who was there um, on that front and talking to some of the booths. And then on September 24th, I believe it was a Saturday afternoon, um, the library hosted a art event for a um, local senior that's lived in our, yeah, artist that's lived in our area for since ever, right? Broads have lived in our community forever. She's actually Janine, Janine Broads' grandmother. Janine is the one that we have the murals all over the town on our business and stuff. She got her artistry gene from her grandmother, it seems. So Ivy Broad, there was an art show at the library, and I believe we're keeping the art up until the end of the month. So yes, yeah. so it's there at the library if anyone's interested in going to check it out. Um, she seemed quite happy. I can't remember how old. <laughs> and that was my month of September. Thank you. So do we have any questions on that one? All right. Can we get a uh, motion to accept the council reports for the first time? Council reports, yeah. Can I say mine? Yes, you did. Excuse me. Thank you. 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 And the programs that are rolling on this year, how they went, all the participants, and how the COVID being last year, and things, how much more participants we got, or even our online ones. And then there's a few things I'm not sure if I can talk about that they're working on that are kind of as upcoming to the new year. Other than that, that was important. Thank you. Any <laughs> questions? Check. We got them all. No, I think no, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, say reports. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. A bit of a long one tonight, but uh it's been busy. I uh I attended the Yellowhead Library meeting on behalf of Council Miller and Mayor Hobson on Zoom and uh was uh just a two and a half two and a half hour meeting and uh, just listening to your budget and listening to um Staff leaving, they got uh, uh, overall usages up and, and so forth. So it was just uh, uh, talking back and forth, and it was, uh, it was quite an interesting form of meeting, actually. So it was great. We're busy working with uh, new, our administrative team is very busy working with new homeowners and their contractors to make sure the new home built in Madison is called the Mother Rules Permit, using the town's road contractors and connecting sewer and water to the home from our system. So we are monitoring. Uh, the fence hopefully is went up today. I'll monitor it again tomorrow because the base the floor isn't on yet. We met with the builders uh, this morning at 11 o'clock and uh, contractors and talked about our some of our concerns with them and uh, some of the things that they needed to do. We assisted the RCMP with traffic volume information for the school crossing for the counties underneath the highway and uh, we still monitor the crosswalk for the afternoon between Bible and myself and uh, whenever uh, Mr. Pierre can come in. <coughs> And uh, it's getting more and more fun in the mornings. I've been able the last two mornings because I had meetings uh, this morning when I'll be there. But uh, it's uh, always fun to see everybody. Uh, we've locked in our gas fees, our natural gas fees with Hudson Energy. Uh, OPEC just announced they'll be cutting oil production by 2 million barrels a day. And with the war in Ukraine going on in Webb this year, we're expecting an Arctic vortex winter. Uh, we expect the gas to go around $10 a individual. Uh, now, we can't predict the future, it's tough to say, however, we do a quick calculation to illustrate. Last month, our gas was at 8.50, that's what we were in, with our new locked-in rate of 6.23, and with our consumption of uh, 5,686 cubic fuels, we were at 6,075.60 last month. So that's an energy typically locks you in or asks you to start locking in at this time of year, so last month would have been pretty soon. If gas breaks the $10 barrier, our average is $10 for the next year, which they're expecting it to, we could easily uh, save $21,000 on our gas bill. Now, 
don't I don't recall any uh, any of the actual numbers, but right now gas is an extremely volatile commodity in the global market and will be up for pretty good occasion. So um, probably minimum twenty one thousand. I'll be uh, meeting with County Fire in October to discuss our contract in preparation for the twenty twenty three budget. And as a community awareness event, our Spots Recreation Center and had a chance to chat with the school superintendent, fire chiefs and other vendors. I only intended on staying half an hour. It's been a long day, and an hour and a half later, I've been home, so it's pretty cool. Uh, administration sent a condolence card from the town to the fire team at the Thursday Hall regarding the tragic death of a recent colleague from the administration and council. We also sent a get well card to Mr. Ruff after his review for collision mission to see recovery from council administration. We sent in our total quality management program. It's been completed and sent into safety codes because we are an accredited safety code. Uh, we attended, I have attended with the mayor, Mr. Shadow's Roundtable in Edmonton, regarding provincial policing, and uh, pretty much uh, indicated uh, during uh, Mayor Hodges' uh, report basically that everything is okay here. Uh, we just uh, are still worried that the minister is in the permit. The electronic sign transportation has approved the agenda to the original permit. Last week, it released the sign to the new location. The sign company has been informed. We may be able to port the base this fall, but we have no opinion from them yet. We have an electrical quote between 35 and 4,000 from Basic uh, Electric, as we talked about yesterday. And this amount was not the original grant or quote. So when they port the, the base and when that all comes, will come to council, or maybe able to put it into the next budget and just add it into the budget. But I'm waiting to get back to the sign. Uh, and uh, uh, the sign, uh, transportation indicated that it's new placement. We still can't advertise on it. That hasn't changed. What can go on the sign as an example is ABC Restaurant has a lasagna special for the lunch for supper at 10 25. There's a hockey tournament from 7 to 9 tonight at the Art Spas Rec Center, that sort of thing. What cannot go on the sign is advertising for property, selling furniture, and other assets. And of course, phone numbers, emails, and other identifiers other than these. Uh, sign is is at a community announcement board because it's based by the 7857 stone. So, uh, but we're ready to put it up. We're ready to go, and uh, all paid off. So we just have to uh, wait for that. So we, uh, after Council Tracy and Mayor decided tonight. <laughs> uh, the water for grants uh, and meetings. Um, we have a meeting actually, uh, Mr. Mayor and I, on the 12th of October to meet the president of Water for Land and their team. They wish to discuss further opportunities. Thursday, to which I'll update you after tomorrow's meeting. Uh, they're very excited about what we're doing, and they have lots of uh, potential opportunities, and they want to talk back with us. So that's pretty awesome. Um, the update on the uh, from the uh, Water for Life grant on the uh, $195,000 grant from engineering. They're on the information gathering phase of the project, trying to get all the background information compiled on all the infrastructure in the area. To date, they've obtained the uh, catastrophic CD base. CAD base for information for the area, so that's just, uh, that's just a CAD base that shows, shows where everybody's pipes and, and everything are. They've ordered the NTS contour data, so we know um, how the geostructure in the, uh, in the uh, fields and all that sort of thing works, and the geostructure within the municipalities, uh, how, it, how it sits, and we'll be taking the transmission in alignment with the communities within the next week. The intent uh, is to run the GPS survey profile on the proposed road alignment to confirm the contour information prior to the cell phone. And the next step <coughs> after that is to perform inspections of each of the water facilities in each municipality to determine the suitability and obtain usage information in the study. I'm meeting with Enoch for Commission on Friday afternoon at 9 o'clock to discuss water with them. They're very interested. Uh, they have set a meeting date for them to meet with one of the counselors and potentially uh, Chief Cody. Um, Mr. Kearley and I attended, uh, Mr. Kearley can comment more on his report, but I stayed in county last Wednesday to look at a waste pumping system into the raw water ponds from back trucks and septic companies. We'll be looking to discuss uh, with the Water for Lake team to look at a grant into starving. We watched it work and uh, we uh, had the privilege of having a back truck. A load in front of us, it was exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. But I've learned working the police service for many years, I didn't know it was okay, but it was fascinating how fast it took to unload that back truck. It was fast. And 
what was coming out of it was rather intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this pump system, uh, they got such a, a high level grinder in this pump that uh, it, it comes with a dust of gloss because the blades are so sharp. And it grinds up screwdrivers. Like, it's just it's nothing. Pretty impressive. So, um, I'm confident that uh, Andrew can uh, elaborate on that in his report, which is a pleasure to hear. That is all from the scale. Uh, just one thing there, Donna. Um, that special meeting there for uh, change that one date. Oh, we're going to discuss that in the CFO uh, yeah. report. Uh, report. Uh, okay, perfect. All right. Any, any other have any other questions? Nothing. Thank you. We'll get all these together with a motion. Uh, next, uh, we know bylaw officer report. No bylaws to report, no bylaws to Okay, public works, and we're All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, so for the month of September, uh, public works has been um, working on parking out where all of our uh, storm drains are, uh, culverts and everything like that, to try and make it a little bit easier this winter with keeping uh, them open and flowing properly. Um, then getting <coughs> prepared for winter, I uh, got the sander all set up and everything's pretty ready to go as, um, as well as working on our plow. Uh, I've been doing some fall cleanup around the, our compounds, trying to get a lot of the uh, unnecessary debris out of, it, out, of the, out of town, or out of our compounds anyway. Um, uh, all of our summer equipment has now been put away over for the winter. Um, uh, um, working on a water meter replacement program, looking into different types of meters, different types of communication, um, working on building a program so that it'll be constant maintenance thing instead of one lump sum. They have a set time frame for everything to be used over. Uh, as you guys are aware, some of our meters are very old. Uh, uh, road repairs, uh, gravel roads, trying to keep on top of potholes. The, the rain that we did have in December on our on the asphalt popping. Um, <coughs> Created the security system at Public Works. We now have uh, uh, HD cameras monitoring Public Works as well. Uh, completed uh, insurance inspection with our uh, insurance provider. Uh, this is uh, um, every three years. They come around and give us an update on. Uh, had meetings with vendors um, in regards to supply issues. They wanted to let us know that uh, high crates are being stretched out for the rest of getting stuff in, as well as the cost of it and everything is going up drastically. Um, and as uh, you know, Donna was mentioning, uh, when it's the last thing and uh, into the uh, unit for septic uh, service, so septic trucks pull up, actually dump, it monitors everything, whatever we want it to monitor. Uh, if, if there's any uh, byproducts in it that can't be in, a, in our lagoon, it'll lock that out of that system right away. As soon as the sensor tags it, it, uh, it shuts it down. Uh, I got a pretty Interesting security system that's actually built in with it as well. Um, as soon as something like that's triggered, it actually won't allow the truck to leave until they call and have uh, have everything authorized. Um, we talked about um, potentially having that system on a reverse process as well. So not only can we pump into 
our lagoon. The pad is set up so that we can pump out of our lagoon. <coughs> website goes. I never go to it, but I actually went to it today. And 
they're just like the, there's this reminder about bill due dates. I don't know if it looks better on computer, but it's actually very obnoxious. And then the window to like the, to close it is kind of hidden by the word bill. And it's it it caught me up guard. It looked very like malicious, and I was very un unwilling to click on it or touch it. I think it is better on computer, but on on mobile, it it was disconcerting and looked malicious to me. So just um, as feedback. Better on the app, which is which is programmed and designed for the web. Uh, it's definitely on the desktop. Um, that is a notice that I have up pretty much whenever there is something that I need to That that specific choice makes sure that everything. I, I guess my point um, is there's a way to reformat it in some way, just like it, like you, sure. like the X is literally hidden behind the word bill, so you don't even know how to close it, yeah. and it, just, so it think, comes off as very Trojan okay. horsey. Wait there. Mine is not. So, yeah, I started saying it. It caught me off guard, so I thought I would mention it as well. Yeah, so it is dependent on your function as well. Yes. And um, I can absolutely change the format. I just specifically use that one because it is very interesting. And it is a very important notice. Um, that we found. And it, yeah, it is one I can deal with. I think all the time. People don't pay their bills. They send them on, like, they go to eat them online on the 31st. Oh, but it wasn't so much the yeah. what it was, it was yeah. the way it was presented on my mobile device came off as like very like almost so in your face and not being able to close it because you can't see the X, so it seemed very like problematic of I don't want to click on anything here. What is going on? For sure. Uh, I can absolutely change that. I unfortunately can't make it appear better on your on your system. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, no, like I said, I yeah, I'm just pointing it out. Yeah, it's very obvious on Tracy and my device, so I can I can do that for sure. Um and then, right, through Council Shelley, uh, I know that it was um, you who brought up the volunteer yeah. uh, option. So, and, so we'll have to call, well, I'll reach out to the library just to get the specifics and the PTA. And was, was there one other group? The PTA, the library, the two big ones? And FCS, yeah. We have FCS. Okay. Okay. So I will reach out to those two groups and get the positions and I will get that to you, Jeff. Absolutely. Okay. I am prepared to push a lot of uh, volunteers on our website and okay. um, okay. and then for the rest of the month I'm also going to phone for the containers and I'm prepared to for the inquiry. Um, I prepared much of the back end for a new bylaws policy change on our website. Uh, to make sure that our bylaws are much more consistent. So the way it is now we can sort of back
very clear to people that well, people that will take advantage of the fact that they don't have to pay their water bill. Um, and but it has to be paid by back on the 15th of April. Okay, so then it has to be paid in full by then or they're cut off no one can take the rest of it. Um, the property taxes are at $207,734 of which $79,256.42 is not current here. So That the bank balance as of today in the operating account was 751,000, the savings account 1.3 million, um, and there is 160,000 dollars that is where that's all. And then I will have because I just stopped an audit. I will have a full various report for Sky to talk about this particular account. Just to add to that, Mr. Mayor, accounts would be 3D properties going to tax sale after March. Uh, CAO can kind of make some decisions uh, with respect to that. 
and if we have to bring that back as an, as an addendum, usually you have some parking trailers on the street after October. Um, I'd have to review the bylaw, and, and um, Jesse and I can review that to see where, in which exact passage it says you can't do that. Uh, to me, it's not a big deal as long as you don't pull out your hoses and. No, there's a, there's a time limit if you um, have your holiday trailer on the street or in your in your yard. But a lot of municipalities allow that. They allow overnight if you're coming to a wedding and so forth. I have no issue with that. So we'll review the bylaw. Yeah. And if we have to make a quick event, then when's your next um, event? Uh, there's well, this weekend. Next weekend, for example. Here. We well, can do it like for uh, the dance. We did it for the dance. They stayed overnight in a camper. Yeah. Oh. And nobody. Let me, um, Mr. Mayor Council, let me see if there's uh, Christian language in the pilot that allows me to kind of override with the permit. The reason why, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Mayor. The reason I'm asking that is because we have a set of uh, prices for home rent, et cetera, et cetera. But then, if we can, it would put that in the bottom somewhere so we can reject that. Something to that effect, and I think the people would be happy. Like I said, again, just for back of room, we had talked about at that time when we had last talked about this under under prior like election, uh, as well as like the cost in terms of that. Right, we've talked about the kind of lack of accommodations in town and stuff in general. Uh, it is it is a common parking lot there as well, so I think the the hockey association and everything would be kind of. I mean, they, they didn't like the idea of losing parking, but at the same time, it actually accommodates them as well in a different way. Yeah, so, so exactly. So if you're going to look at that, you're going to look at it for the hockey, right? Because yeah, it, but I mean, the common shared parking lot right. that both the rec center and the hall could both uh, possibly benefit from. It's just a matter of making sure we don't cut off all the parking. Right. But then you also have parking to the south of the rec center that is gravel, and yeah. then we have alternatives. I'm not sure people would like to spend the evening with their ball team, mm -hmm. and if it's no here, it's no there, it's no everywhere, and all of a sudden, hey, we can't stay there, we've got to go to the Duke and spend the night there and spend $700 on food there rather than over here. So, I'm not opposed to any of that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Andrew. Uh, just in regards to that, would it be possible to uh, work with the Lions and have a discounted rate for? Something like that? Yes, that would be possible. That would be possible. If I'm in, but if I'm in a wedding party and I'm a bride and groom, et cetera, et cetera, and I want to change to whatever right there and then, if I told them they cannot bring their trailer in there. Okay, well, I understand that part, but at the same time, like, uh, if you're, if I'm going to use winter time, for example, if you're having a wedding party at the at the hall, and there's 20 trailers that are parked out there. Now, with my snow removal, I run into the issue of a bunch of trailers in the middle of, in the, middle of the parking lot. They're only be there for one night. I get that. I camp. get that, but I don't get to pick and choose my snowball. And I'm not trying to fight against it. I'm just seeing this is one of the things that we. I just thought I'd bring it up, and uh, we could stick it to that fairly soon. We can put on our contract for the hall rent. Executive team will talk about it. Mayor Council, thank you. And then just one more thing, I want to commend the uh, staff of the town maintenance crew. They've done a tremendous job around there, cutting the grass, doing everything. One time, I just simply said, "You can just cut the grass there next to the hall." And so just like that. So thank you very much.
Thank you all.